My name is Edward Roski, and as CEO at Interrail, I've been helping companies plan for uncertainty for the last 25 years. Soon, you'll be fighting for the survival of your company. While everyone is hoping the economy recovers quickly, there are a few tools we absolutely must have to make it through the downturn. Today, I'm going to be covering those five tools at a high level as I deep dive on each one in separate briefings. So decide which ones can help you the most now, and then watch those briefings. You'll notice that every one of the tools focuses on speed, getting the right information to the right people at the right time so they can make better business decisions faster. As fast as information is changing, we need to deprioritize trying to get accurate information to the nth decimal and instead focus on speed. We must be able to generate new scenarios in minutes, not days. President Eisenhower once said, I've always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. In other words, it's more about the process of thinking ahead than about the numbers or the details that you generate while planning. Because as soon as you encounter the enemy, that detailed plan goes out the window. But thank goodness you plan for a whole lot of different scenarios. And that leads to my first tool for surviving change. No, it's not bottled water. The tap water is going to keep working. It's not a Swiss army knife. We're not talking natural disaster here. It is not way too much toilet paper. No, it's scenario planning. What scenarios are possible and how will we, will we deal with them if they occur? You need scenario planning because I am absolutely positive that your budgeted numbers for this year are going to be wrong. So it's time to come up with some additional possible situations that might occur. I'm using Oracle EPM Cloud because that's what we use at NRL for our scenario planning. The first rule of scenario planning, and no, it is not the same as the first rule of Fight Club, is determine which two to five scenarios are most likely to occur. The second rule of scenario planning is take those scenarios and plan your top five KPIs for those scenarios. And the third rule of scenario planning is use those KPIs to drive your forecast. Once you have your two to five scenarios planned, take those forecasts and share them with the organization until everyone top to bottom knows which actions you'll take if one of the scenarios does occur. Which brings me to the second tool we need during times of major change, strategic modeling. What should my strategic plan be within my financial constraints? The likely case is that a recession will occur. I would say that the odds of a recession not happening, at least a short one, are about the same as the odds that a full-blown depression will occur. Now let's not think about that, but if you want to model all those possible outcomes, go for it. Strategic modeling is sometimes called scenario modeling, strategic planning, constraint-based modeling, driver-based long-range financial planning. Whatever you call it, use it to model your revenue, expenses, balance sheet, and cash flow so that you have some idea of your liquidity. When will you be running out of money if you don't take action? And then make sure you take action on these strategic models so you don't run out of money. Because if you do, it's game over, man. Game over. Third tool we need in times of change is profitability and cost management. What are our most profitable and our least profitable products and locations? Far too many companies wait until they're out of money to figure out what they should stop doing, what locations they should close, what products they should discontinue, and sadly, which people they should lay off. Don't let this happen to you. Cash is king. Find out in the next 30 days which stores are costing you money, which facilities are expendable, and which people aren't pulling their own weight. Then take, take those high-level costs, allocate them down by product, by location, by customer, and then take action so that you're not implementing a profitability solution in bankruptcy court. Our fourth tool is data visualization. How can I get the right information to the right people at the right time and show it to them in a way that will help them take action? Here I'm using a combination of Oracle EPM for my financial data visualizations along with Oracle Analytics Cloud for my enterprise dashboards. I don't care where you do it. Just make sure that it's easy enough that a business person can do it. During times of rapid change like this, you don't want there to be any delays or extra steps between the time a business person asks the question and the time the business person gets the answer. Notice though, I'm not saying do this in Excel. The reason for that is you wanna be looking for trends, 
root causes patterns in your data. Excel is a great viewer of information, but it makes a lousy visualization tool. Use Excel for the grids, use for the detail, when you have time again in a few months to dive into thousands of rows of financial data. But in the meantime, please use a data visualization tool. And now our fifth tool, narrative reporting. How can we explain where and why actuals didn't match up to budget? Narrative reporting is another way of saying giving context to your data, or to put it still another way, explaining why your budget is off. Now, variance analysis is the most common place that narrative reporting shows up because it lets you have a good dialogue about why your budgets are off, because they will be off. But there are other usages from preparing books of reports to distributing packages of information to opening up a dialogue ahead of time about your numbers. Narrative reporting is your way of unjamming the lines of communication so that you can have that dialogue about why your numbers are wrong and what you're going to do about it. Don't put yourself in the position of saying, once your quarterly numbers come in, well, uh, our budgets are off, I guess, because of that whole coronavirus thing. So who has the next question? Those type of answers are going to make Wall Street pummel your stock price and they will get your CFO fired. So your five tools to survive and thrive as we go from dealing with coronavirus to dealing with the aftermath. Number one, scenario planning. Number two, strategic modeling. Number three, profitability and cost management. Number four, data visualization. And number five, narrative reporting. To get a deep dive on each of these topics, go to interroll.com slash updates and stay up to date on all the information as it changes. This is Edward Grosky with Interroll Finance News. Stay safe out there.